Today's topic will be on perfect capital mobility. Okay, we are talking about the next aspect of the open economy. Now, what is capital? Capital is basically money or currency that is flowing in and out of countries. So the reason why capital flow in and out of countries, okay, will be explained later in the detail. But just think about uh, me having a bunch of, uh, of of cash, okay, and if I were to put it in the bank right here, I'll be earning interest from it, right? If let's say another bank okay, offers a high interest rate, I will want to take my money out of this bank and put it into the other bank instead, which gives me a high return. So that is the same reason why uh, investors around the world okay, would put money into different countries. Maybe because, like for example, my country Singapore is maybe offering an interest rate of maybe 0.1%. But if another country is offering something else that is much more, maybe 2%, okay, so I would, I would rather put my money into that country Okay, so that I can get the higher interest rates. So this money, okay, that is used to put into other countries is basically known as hot money. Okay, and hot money can flow either in or out of a country, de uh, depending on the interest rate differences. So why does capital flow? Okay, uh, like we mentioned just now, because of bigger return. And obviously people want to maximize their investments, so... Uh, the bigger return that another country gives me, I, I, I would definitely want to put my money inside there. So, what determines a bigger return? Okay, either is determined by either interest rates or exchange rates. For this syllabus, okay, you only need to know about the interest rates. The exchange rates part, uh, you will learn more about this in year 2 when you take macroeconomics. But for today's uh, video tutorial, we'll just be talking about nominal interest rates. Okay. Now, I have to teach you about the concept of the balance of payment. Basically, the balance of payment is an account that every country has, and it is made up of my current account, which is my net exports, and my capital account. So my current account will be basically uh, like what we talked about in the previous video, exports minus imports. Okay, so the net exports is actually my current account. And my capital account is basically money that has either uh, flowed into my country or out of my country. Okay, so it's, it's, it basically captures the capital that comes in and out of the country. So that's why it's called the capital account. Okay, and at equilibrium, okay, uh, balance of payment will be equal to zero. Now, why is this so? Okay, take this uh, example. Let's say country A imports five, wants to import uh, $5 billion worth of uh, goods and services. So my net exports will be negative five. Where is the country going to get this money to import so much stuff? Okay, he has to borrow. So it borrows $5 million from where? I mean, I don't know, maybe the rest of the world. So when it borrows money from the rest of the world using their high interest rates uh, to attract these, these people to lend them money, or they, they, they sell uh, their own bonds to other countries, what happens is that money from other countries will flow into this economy, okay, into country A. So let's say we need to import $5 billion worth of stuff. Okay, we will have to borrow $5 billion worth of cash. So that is why my capital account will be in a surplus, right? I mean, cash is coming in. So that is why, okay, my capital account is plus 5. Okay, so plus 5, okay, and negative 5 will give me 0. Okay, and this goes, in, goes, this goes the other way as well. Okay, if let's say uh, for some reason, maybe due to, yes, high interest rates, Country A has got suddenly, miraculously, $5 billion worth of money flowing into the economy. And by the way, when we talk about uh, this $5 million, it is in country A's currency. Okay, so basically, uh, when the other countries wanted to lend money to country A by either buying their bonds or whatsoever, uh, they had to actually change their currency into country A's currency. So this $5 billion of worth of cash I've borrowed okay, as a country A, I will definitely use it to import, right? So this uh, actually balanced the whole thing up to zero. Okay, so that is why the balance of payment equals to zero. All right, previously on open economy, okay, we had this scenario whereby uh, we only had the IS uh, or the annex line on the ISLM model, and why? That's because the balance of payment was entirely equal to the capital account, okay? And the capital account is, as we know, uh, net exports, right? And capital account will be equal to zero because we had the assumption there was zero capital mobility. No, none of this hot money was allowed to come in and out of the country. So our balance of payment totally relied on our capital account. 
Okay, so when the balance of payment equals to the capital account, the balance of payment also equals to my NX. And therefore, I have my NX over here. And we discussed in the previous videos that uh, whenever the economy is on this line, that means NX is equal to zero. Okay, but in today's episode, what we'll be talking about is the balance of payment, which is only made up of the capital account. That means the current account is equal to zero. Okay, it's actually approximately equal to zero. Uh, it doesn't mean that I cannot export or import. It's just that it's very, it's very insignific insignificant. Right, my capital account is, the, uh, I mean, sorry, capital mobility is so perfect such that it makes my capital uh, current account, which is NX, uh, very insignificant. Therefore, it is approximately equal to zero. Okay, so we know that previously what we talked about was that uh, investors look at the interest rates. Okay, so if the foreign interest rates equals to I star, that means to keep my, my current account, uh, sorry, to keep my capital account equals zero, okay, my domestic interest must be equals to I star as well. So I need to have this situation over here. If there is any difference whatsoever, it will cause a very huge um, capital inflow. Okay, so for example, if let's say the foreign interest rate is 5%, Okay, maybe okay now in Singapore comparing to Malaysia. If Malaysia's banks is like offering five percent interest rate on whatever deposits they have, okay, my okay the local Singaporean interest rates okay has to be five percent as well. Okay, so if let's say, okay, check out my new toy. Okay, so let's say if um in Singapore, okay, my interest rates is gonna be uh six percent, and in Malaysia, okay. It's going to be five percent, so this is going to be more attractive, right? So all the money, okay, a lot of money will be flowing into this country, okay, and there'll be capital inflow here, okay, capital inflow. Okay, if let's say now I'm going to drop my interest rates, okay, to maybe three percent, then there'll be outflow because now Malaysia is going to be more attractive, so money is going to come over here. Okay, so that is how capital inflow outflow works. Okay, so with with that known, that means uh, only if and only if my interest rates are the same, my balance of payment will be equal to zero because uh, people will be indifferent putting money into uh, economy A or economy B. So if interest rates, okay, has to be the same, let's say for example, if on the y-axis I've got interest rates and my interest rates are 5%, okay, and Malaysia's ones is also 5%, so that means along this line, okay, that is where 5% equals to 5%, okay, and anyway, this is interest rate, so this is the level at which interest is 5%. So there I have it, I got my BP equals to zero line, okay, and I'm just going to add my X axis, which is my output, and there I have my IS model and my LM model, so this is the model that you need to have, okay, for uh, analyzing uh, a situation where there's perfect capital mobility. Okay, so now we're going to go through a few examples. Okay, we're going to talk about an expansionary mon monetary policy. We're going to talk about contractionary monetary policy in both the fixed exchange rate uh, scenario as well as the flexible exchange rate scenario. Okay, so let's look at an expansionary monetary policy with a fixed exchange rate. Okay, so what happens now? Okay, we know that when there's an expansionary monetary policy, my LM curve is going to shift down. Okay, so my LM curve is going to shift down. So I have this. And that's LM1, M1, P0. Okay, so my economy from uh, A has gone to this part B. Okay, now don't forget, you need to explain exactly how the economy got to this point. Okay, uh, you got to look back at my uh, ISLM, model, uh, ISLM model videos on how this exactly is done. Okay, so now at point B, what has happened is that income has increased. And... My interest rates has dropped, so that means domestic interest rates is now lesser than my foreign. Uh, sorry, my my local interest rates is now lesser than my foreign interest rates. So, if let's say my interest rates are now uh, lower, what happens is that capital outflow is capital is going to flow out of my country. Okay, so when capital is going to flow out of my country, these are the few things that's going to happen. Okay, so. Let's say locally, okay, domestic people will want to put their money into foreign assets. So therefore, what happens to my domestic currency? Okay, there is going to be an excess supply. Why? Because people will be selling away 
uh, Singaporean dollar so that they can buy Malaysian ringgit so that they can put that Malaysian ringgit in they can use that Malaysian ringgit to buy Malaysian assets so there will be an excess supply of um, domestic currency so if you have this graph over here where this is quantity and this is price of the domestic currency that's demand and supply so excess supply that means my supply curve is going to move to the right side and my I can expect my currency to depreciate okay so in a fixed exchange rate, the government doesn't want this to happen. So what, what the government does is that it's going to okay, create a demand for it. So once it creates a demand, oh, uh, yeah, it, once it creates a demand, the demand curve is going to go to the right and therefore it keeps the exchange rate fixed. Okay, so how does it create a demand? It actually buys up uh, local currency. So once it buys up local currency, basically it soaks up the, the, the money. Okay, so my money supply is going to go down. Therefore, my LM curve is going to go back to point A, all right, and LM0 is also equal to LM2, where my money supply is now M2, P0. Okay, so in your explanation, you're just going to talk about this, about how the government is going to keep the exchange rate fixed by soaking up uh, cash, okay, which reduces the money supply, and we go back to this point where I0 is equal to I0 star. So is an expansionary monetary policy effective in an economy whereby there's a fixed exchange rate and um, perfect capital mobility? The answer is no, it is not effective. Why? Because my output just went from Y0 to Y1 and back to Y0 again. So therefore it is not effective. Alright, so the next thing that we're going to be looking at would be a contractionary fiscal policy. Okay, contractionary fiscal policy, that means my IS curve is going to shift to the left. Okay, so I've got this. IS1, so maybe uh, government increased taxes, okay, so T0 has become T1, exchange rates hasn't changed, and now I'm at point B, okay, where income is at Y1, and interest rates is now uh, I1, which is less than I0 star. So the same situation is going to happen again. We know that the government is going to reduce the money supply because uh, they have to create a false demand for uh, the domestic currency. So in order to create a false demand for domestic currency, what they do is they keep buying up local currency. Once they keep buying up local currency, basically it makes sense that the, the local currency supply is going to drop, right? So once uh, the, the money supply drops, what happens to my uh, LM curve? My LM curve shifts up. Okay, so my LM curve is going to shift up where? Until a point where the equilibrium interest is back at I1. Uh, sorry, I0. And I have my new output at Y2. And this is point C. And I have LM1. Money supply has changed to M1, P0. So is this uh, policy effective? Yes, it is very effective. Okay, because it really helped to contract the economy. We went from Y0 to Y2. Okay, so that is the effectiveness of the contractionary fiscal fiscal policy uh, in a situation whereby there is a fixed exchange rate and there is perfect capital mobility. So basically, as you can see, everything happens uh, along the BP line. We have to go back to the BP line. So th this topic is actually very, very easy if you look at it this way. Now, let's talk about something that's a little bit more complex and it's complex just because there's a little bit more steps. We'll be talking about a contractionary monetary policy with a flexible exchange rate system. Okay, so let's do the normal drills. Contractionary policy means that my LM curve is going to shift up. I've got LM1. Money supply has dropped to M1. And my price is still at P0. And this is going to be point B. The economy's output now is at Y1 and interest rates is now I1 which is more than I0 star okay so we have got this situation here whereby interest rates are higher so when interest rates are higher okay when I1 I1 is more than I0 star basically what happens is uh, there will be capital inflow Okay, by the way, there is massive capital inflow, yeah? Okay, so once there's massive capital inflow, okay, basically my balance of payment is going to be more than zero. And I know that when my balance of payment is more than zero, my exchange rate is going to increase. Okay, so let's verify this, shall we? Okay, we have same thing, the quantity and the price of the domestic currency over here. And that's the demand curve and that's the supply curve for my domestic currency. So there will be a big demand for my currency because people want to buy my assets, right? 
so that means my demand curve is going to shift to the right okay so I that goes to show that from here I'm going to move up here so the price of the domestic currency has increased therefore this exchange rate is going to appreciate okay it's going to go up okay my my, my sing dollar is going to appreciate Alright, so what happens when this happens? Okay, when exchange rate increases. Basically, my exports are going to drop. Okay, because now uh, my goods are going to look more expensive than in the past. My imports are going to increase. Okay, and this makes my IS curve shift to the left. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. And we will do that. So see, the IS curve is going to shift to the left. You, where is it going to shift it to? It's going to shift until the equilibrium interest is back at I0. Okay, so I'm going to draw my new IS curve over here. We we'll call it IS1. Government spending didn't change. Taxes didn't change. Exchange rate changed though. Uh, this is real interest, okay? But it did change anyway. So now my new output is going to be Y2. And interest rates fell back to I0. Okay, so is this contractionary monetary policy effective? Yes, it is. It is effective in a flexible exchange rate policy. And um, just let me show you. Uh, yeah. So you see, monetary policy okay, in fixed exchange rate system is not effective at all because you know we have got this scenario. But when it's flexible, it's actually very effective. Okay, so when we talk about effectiveness of a policy is whether the government achieves what uh, he, she wants okay uh, in regards to either contract contracting the economy or spending the economy okay we've got one last one to go it will be an expansionary fiscal policy with flexible exchange rate okay so okay let's do it All right flexible exchange flexible uh, sorry expansionary fiscal policy IS curve is going to shift right okay so I'm going to shift this to the right I've got IS1 Okay, government increased their spending. Um, everything else is unchanged. All right. So we have the new output level at Y1, and this is point B, and my interest rates has risen to I1, which is more than I not star. Okay, so this is the short run. Okay. So we have the same story as before. Okay, I know that my exchange rate is going to increase. So once my exchange rate increase what happens to my exports and my imports okay just let me draw it out for you again okay so once my exchange rate increase my exports are going to decrease because my goods and services are now more expensive than in the past okay imports are going to increase and therefore my is is going to shift left okay that is the only conclusion so my is going to shift left again until where until point A so point A is also equal to point C and IS not is also equal to IS1 where government spending has increased to G1 taxes has remained unchanged and real interest rates has changed from E0 to E1 and Y0 is also equal to Y2 okay, because that is the long run equilibrium and my interest rates has gone back to I0 so if you want to be a little bit more detailed you can put this I2 equals to I0 equals to I0 star so as you can see, let me uh, let me compare this uh, scenario to a fixed exchange rate. Okay, as you can see, for a fixed exchange rate, fiscal policy is very effective. But for flexible exchange rate, fiscal policy is not effective because we went back to square one. Right. So that that, that brings me to the end of uh, my video on perfect capital mobility I can assure you this topic is actually very easy as you can see I think some of you already agree with me okay so that's about it and uh, yeah I, I, I think I hope you like my new toy it's called a boogie board um, it's some LCD writing tablet which I spent uh, $59 on sing dollar okay it's pretty neat you know I can actually use this to do my homework uh, without wasting paper okay not homework I can do my revision you know I can practice like um, you know writing out equations and stuff yeah so I think you should go buy it um, if you're Singaporean uh, I actually got this at Action City I've got no idea why I'm doing free publicity for this though but yeah okay you can get it at Action City okay alright thanks